This question is about how to make flavors pop, um, especially the things like vanilla. You know, how do we make the vanilla taste really good? Well, we're going to talk about both making flavors pop in a fruity sense, and then what I would call more of a savory sense where there's no acid naturally occurring. How do we get vanilla to come out? You know, um, vanilla likes to be in, you know, a basic environment, not acidic. Um, so it's good in milk. It's great in ice cream. You know, one of the things that I like to do with vanilla is a little bit of salt. It's almost like adding citric acid to a cherry flavor or, or a citrus flavor. Um, so a little bit of salt, I mean, just a pinch, not, you don't want to put enough salt in there that it's a salted caramel type flavor, but just enough, you know, a little pixie dust over the top of your, you know, one gallon base of ice cream. Um, vanilla likes fat, you know, so it's really good in a high fat environment. It definitely doesn't like acidity. So, you know, you don't find vanilla beans in nature with a high acidic value. They just don't exist that way. It's like chocolate, you know, when you taste an acidified chocolate, or an acidified vanilla, it's probably in a yogurt. And that's because we've culturally become accepting of that. But normally, cream brulee tastes good, not acidified. And so most everything, like a vanilla shake, uh, also they just don't go well with acidified. Now, that's not to say you can't put vanilla with strawberry and make a strawberry cream with it, where the strawberry needs the acidity to drive it, and the vanilla comes behind it with that creamy kind of character. Now, for all other flavors, if it's a fruity flavor, you, you make a fruity flavor pop by adding acid. Because in nature, all fruity flavors, for the most part, contain acidity. Banana is an exception to that, I get it. Um, there's a few things like that, but most fruity flavors, by design, have acidity driving it. Makes, it's like cream and sugar makes coffee pop, while sugar and acid make fruity flavors pop and just enough. So then it becomes a little more complicated. You know, you know the rule the flavor guy says, hey, don't wanna make it over flavored because I don't wanna, I don't wanna burp it 10 minutes from now or an hour from now. And I want that flavor to go away rapidly because that's what keeps me drinking it or scooping it or eating it or eating that cookie. Um, but you also want just the right amount of flavor in this thing called a triangle. Flavor at the top of the triangle, acidity over here or sugar over here or acidity over here, but those three things go together, flavor, acidity, and sweetness, or flavor, sweetness, and salt. Those three things work together like cream and sugar works in coffee. So in these fruity flavors, if there's no acidity, you almost lost one of the dimensions. It's no longer three dimensions anymore. It's not a triangle anymore. It's like a straight line, flavor and acidity, or flavor and sweetness. If it's just flavor and sweetness and it's a fruity flavor, guess what most people do? they just keep adding more flavor. And pretty soon they're angry because now they get this medicinal, they'll say it's artificial, uh, their mouth is burning, that's usually really bad. Um, and they're at a point where they're frustrated and disgusted and they're done. And sometimes they get mad at us. And so this, hopefully this video will help for those kinds of um, frustrations, is fruity flavors need something, they need some acidity. Um, they can get by with no sweetness, so you can, you know, you know how it is when you drop a lemon or a lime or even an orange wedge in a glass of water, ice water, it doesn't taste bad because there's acid there. The, you squeeze that lemon, which has had some of the oils of the rind get dissolved in there as well as some of the, uh, obviously the acidity of the, of the lemon or the lime or whatever citrus. Um, and, and there's flavor coming through. And so you mix it in and, and that tastes not, not too bad. Now, if you did, if you just took lime flavor or lemon flavor that has no acid in it, it's not that lime, but it's actual flavor, and you drop that in water, it would not taste the same. It wouldn't taste good unless you put a little bit of citric acid in there or actually squeeze some real you know, lemon juice into it because the acid will finally then drive that flavor out. And you add sugar to that, and now you're on your way to a lemonade or a limeade. You know? So sugar and acid are best or if you're watching calories, a non-nutritive sweetener, like our Sweeten FX at Nature's Flavors, great one-to-one -one replacement for sugar, but and it has no calories. Um, but you can do monk fruit, stevia. There's some really good stevias out there. We make a stevia that's debitterized, so you don't have that aftertaste, that bitterness. Stevia's gotten a bad rap. We could talk about that in another video, but, um, but the right amount of stevia, the right amount of acidity, and just the right amount of flavor, you can make a great tasting sparkling drink or flat drink uh, in your home for a fraction of the cost of all the crazy stuff you're buying at the store. So hopefully this helps you on the vanilla versus 
making other flavors pop. Just remember, they, they need something to drive them, similar to what you would find in nature. So, so a little bit of salt for the vanilla, a little bit of acidity for your fruity flavors, and I like sugar, uh, so preferably sugar, but non-nutrient sweeteners, and you'll have this down. Thanks for watching.